Uh, good morning. I want no score updates. I'm going to watch it this afternoon. I don't want to know. Hopefully you're not out there watching it. May God melt your cell phone. <laughs> Just kidding. Well, today we conclude our study of the New Testament book, 1 Thessalonians. Next Sunday, we'll begin 2 Thessalonians. Our series is titled, Are You Ready? This is part 19. Our scripture today is 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 25 through 28, so that you can follow along in your Bible. 1 Thessalonians 5, 25. Brothers and sisters, pray for us also. Greet all the brothers and sisters with a holy kiss. Aren't you glad you came today? <laughs> I charge you by the Lord that this letter be read to all the brothers and sisters. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Last week we talked about Paul beginning to say his goodbye to the Thessalonian church, a church that he had founded and had helped to grow. Paul wanted to encourage them and to equip them before he moved on to his next mission. And so he left these words with the church in Thessalonica. Verse 23, Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely. Paul had taught the church that if they would repent of their sin, if they would accept God's free gift of grace through Jesus Christ, faith in him, then God promised to sanctify them. Sanctify is a work of God that sets us apart as holy in God's sight. Verse 23, And may your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept sound and blameless. Paul taught the church that holy living was very, very important. And not just our appearance, not just our body, not the, just the things on the outside, but also to be holy in our spirit and in our soul as well. In other words, we should all experience real life change through Jesus from the inside out. That happens to be our mission statement that you've probably memorized. Real life change happens when Jesus changes our heart. Real life change begins on the inside and then it works its way out and it changes what people see. But only Jesus can change a heart. Verse 23, And may your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept sound and blameless. So why is it important for us to live a holy life? Because we need to be ready. Our motivation for holy living is the return of of Christ, verse 23, and may your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, there are three things you need to know about this. Number one, Jesus is coming again. Number two, no one knows when, not even the TV preacher. Number three, so be ready. The major theme of the whole book of 1 Thessalonians is the second coming of Christ. The fact that Jesus is coming again is taught in every chapter of 1 Thessalonians. So how can we live a holy life? Verse 24, he who calls you is faithful. He will do it. What has God called every Christian to do? God has called us to become more and more like Jesus in our actions and in our attitude. Now that's a huge, huge calling. And if we are all honest today, how much are we really like Jesus? And I don't know about you, but I've got a long way to go. And it would be impossible to become more like Jesus in my own strength. And thank God, we don't have to do it alone. Why? Verse 24, he who calls you is faithful. He will do it. 
And as we surrender to God, and as we worship God in spirit and in truth, God will change us from the inside out. So our responsibility is to be faithful in worshiping God. And the purpose of worship is to help us to grow, to be more and more like Jesus. Theologian William Temple described worship this way. For to worship is to quicken the conscience by the holiness of God. To feed the mind with the truth of God. To purge the imagination by the beauty of God. To open up the heart by the love of God. To devote the will to the purpose of God. Paul taught the church in Thessalonica that they needed to have balance in their Christian living. That there is a time for negative teaching and there is also a time for positive teaching. Paul said in verse 22, abstain from all appearance of evil. That's negative. Paul said in verse 23, the God of peace will sanctify you. That's positive. And too many times, the church focuses on the negative and we must always have a balance. And as we finish 1 Thessalonians, I wanted to go over some key verses, some verses that would be good for you to jot down and to remember. The top 10 verses in 1 Thessalonians Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 21 but test all things hold on to what is good in other words don't be gullible check out everything and keep what is only true chapter 5 and verse 8 but since we belong to the day Let us be self-controlled and put on the armor of faith and love and a helmet of the hope of salvation. In other words, know where you stand. Do not sleepwalk through life like others do. Keep your eyes open and always be ready. Chapter 4 and verse 11. To seek to lead a quiet life to mind your own business and to work with your own hands as we commanded you. In other words, stay calm. Do your own job and always do your very best in everything you do. Chapter 5, verse 16. Rejoice always. This would be a good verse to memorize. Rejoice always. In other words, be cheerful no matter what. There's nothing worse than a grumpy Christian. (laughs) Chapter 5, verse 14. Brothers and sisters, warn those who are idle, comfort the discouraged, help the weak, be patient with everyone. In other words, Encourage others who are struggling and look for the very best in each other. Chapter 5, verse 17, another good verse to memorize today. Pray constantly. In the Greek, that means pray all the time. Chapter 4, verse 13. The Thessalonian church has some questions about what would happen to their loved ones who died before Jesus returned. And here's Paul's answer. We do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, concerning those who are asleep, those who have passed, so that you will not grieve like the rest who have no hope. In other words... We don't need to carry on in grief like people who have nothing to look forward to as if the grave 
was the last word because it's not since Jesus died and Jesus defeated the grave you can count on this God will most certainly bring back to life those who died in Jesus Jesus is our hope chapter 3 verse 12 may the Lord cause you to increase and overflow with love for one another in other words we should be so full of the love of God that we splash on others around us chapter 3 verse 13 may he make your hearts blameless in holiness before our God and Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus with all the saints in other words may you be filled with confidence and may you look forward to and be ready for the return of Jesus Christ chapter 5 verse 24 he who calls you is faithful he will do it in other words you can completely depend on the one who has called you and if he said it he will do it and as the apostle Paul concludes his first letter to the Thessalonian church he kind of changes gears and turns his attention to the importance of healthy relationships Paul wants three relationships to happen in the church number one equip each other number two encourage each other number three grow together number one equip each other verse 25 brothers and sisters pray for us also Paul ends his letter in the same way he began his letter with prayer in the first part of the letter Paul is praying for the church at the end of the letter Paul is requesting prayer for himself and for his ministry companions Silas and Timothy and notice how he begins verse 25 brothers and sisters brothers and sisters are the Christians in the church when we repent of our sin and accept God's free gift of grace through faith in Jesus Christ we become part of the family of God we are all spiritual brothers and sisters Paul mentions brothers and sisters first because he wants to emphasize that he is requesting their prayer you see the ministry is difficult the enemy is real the enemy wants nothing more than for Christians to give up and to walk away from their faith there are pastors who resign and quit every day Paul is not just asking for prayer he's saying that he needs the prayers of his brothers and sisters without prayer our pastors and our church leaders cannot accomplish anything we become equipped because of the faithful prayers of God's family I know that some of you pray for me and you pray for our church staff and you pray for the church at Argyle thank you for that there is nothing you can do that is more important than praying for each other we don't pray to try to change God's mind when we pray we are the one who is changed from the inside out when we pray God changes our heart when you pray for your pastor oh Lord would you please help him to preach just one good sermon <laughs> and after you pray that my sermon may not improve at all but when you pray for me God does something he opens your heart and my sermon somehow gets a little bit better because you now receive it 
with a changed heart. So what is the right way to pray? Should we stand? Should we sit? Should we kneel? Should we pray in the morning or should we pray at night? Should we pray at church or should we pray at home? The answer to all that is yes. The scripture tells us to come boldly to God with our request. Jesus said in John 14, whatever you ask in my name, I will do it so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask me anything in my name, I will do it. Sometimes the prosperity people try to treat this passage like it's a magic formula. That if you pray and use the magic words in Jesus' name, then God will give you anything you want, no matter what it is. If I pray for someone to drop dead, will they drop dead? If I pray for someone to drop dead in Jesus' name, will they drop dead? Only if it's God's will. To pray in Jesus' name means to pray according to God's will. To pray in Jesus' name means you pray for what God wants. So present your request to God. In Jesus' name, God is so much more concerned about the condition of our heart than about the words we say. The disciples came to Jesus and asked him to teach them how to pray. And so Jesus gave them a model prayer that we call the Lord's Prayer. I say it many times every day. But Jesus did not mean for that prayer to be memorized. He did not mean for that prayer to be recited, not thinking about what it means. He was giving us an example of the things that should be included when you pray. So when you pray, worship God. When you pray, put your trust in God. When you pray, request of God. When you pray, confess and submit to God. It is better to have a heart without words than words without a heart. God honors our prayer. When we pray to him from our heart, when our heart desires God's will. The best way that we can equip each other is to pray for each other if you're keeping score number one equip each other number two encourage each other verse 26 greet all the brothers and sisters with a holy kiss
Thank you.
Awesome. Um, I'm going to take you on a field trip. Some of you have never seen our Family Life Center, and you need to see this. So this is our love this place goal, is to be able to make that place beautiful back there. And I think we're going to be able to do it. We're going to replace the floor, replace the walls, do some painting, do some repair. And it's going to be awesome. So if you would follow me, we'll go right across the hall to this big room behind us. And we're going to pray God's blessing on that. And then I'll just miss you. Three minutes. Walk this way. <laughs> Come on in, gather around. How many of you have never been back here? Yeah, I knew there were several. Yeah. Awesome. Isn't this a wonderful space? If we could just finish it. And so we're going to do a new floor, new walls. There's some repairs and water leaks we're going to fix. That's the first thing we're going to do. And then away we go. And we'll be able to have meals here, fellowships here. All kinds of stuff can happen right here for the glory of God. Uh, who you're giving to, I love this place. Second for others, get in. So I'm afraid short. So what do you think? You think we can do it? Time. It's only been 20, 25 years. <laughs> it's been like this. So we're going to build a storage area or have a storage area to hide all of our stuff because your junk has to go somewhere. <laughs> so we got some. We're going to get rid of some of this. But a lot of this stuff we'll, we'll keep. And we'll store new floor, new walls, paint, repairs. It's going to be awesome. Let's pray. God, thank you for how you have provided for the church at Argyle through all these years. You've been so faithful. In fact, you are the one who does it. And we give you all the praise and all the thanks. And we just pray for our, the I love this praise gift that you will bless that, that we can use those resources to complete this room for the glory of God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you for staying a few minutes. You can hang around here if you want to or go eat lunch. I love you. God bless you. All right, that would have been good, right?